Hello and welcome to our River Eaves Elementary Data Overview. This is meant for all stakeholders at River Eaves and it's presented by Adriana Carrillo. So let's take a look at the purpose. The purpose of this data review presentation is to share data analysis results to create an awareness of student demographics, student achievement, strengths and weaknesses at River Eaves Elementary. We're going to start a dialogue about data at River Eaves Elementary, discover patterns, identify strengths and weaknesses, and begin planning ways to improve student achievement. Let's take a look at River Eaves um, Elementary Profile Summary. So, Reese is situated in a suburban neighborhood in the Northeast Learning Community section of Fulton County Public Schools. Reese was the first Fulton County school to be recognized as a state certified STEM school in 2015. This is important to consider as we're looking at our data today. It is situated in a middle to high economic growth area of North Fulton County near Chattahoochee National Forest and the student majority live in a single family home but the area also includes large neighborhoods and several large apartment complexes. We serve about 688 students. So let's take a look um, at our student population. As you can see here, our highest student population is our white student population and our Latino, Latina, and black student population are around the similar um, percentages. We also serve um, multiracial and Asian Pacific Islander. So there are a wide variety of students at River Eaves. Our student population growth has made a significant growth from 2017 to 2019, going from 642 to about 688 students that we serve from kindergarten to fifth grade. Let's take a look at our subgroups at River Eaves. We serve students with disabilities and English language learners and econ economically disadvantaged students as well. I want you to take into consideration our English language learners and students with disabilities as they are going to be a part of our data uh, analysis later on in the presentation. You can see that they are a smaller population than our economically disadvantaged. And, but we have made a significant growth in our English language learners from 2017 to about 2019. This is our staff certified experience. We do have several new teachers on board as of last year. So our uh, graph ranges from zero to three years, four to seven years, eight to 13, 14 to 19, and 20 plus years. We had several teachers retire as well last year, so that took away our 20 plus year teachers. But the important aspect here that we're gonna take into our action steps are the eight to 13 years and 14 to 19 years as well, um, and see what we can do as far as our action steps are considered. So let's take a look at River, how River Eve's data looks over the course of three years on our milestones data. In 2017, we tested 313 students from third through fifth grade. In 2018, 289 students, and in 2019, 306 students uh, in third through fifth grade. As you can see, we've made a significant growth in mathematics from 2017 to 2019, but a significant decrease from 2017 to 2019 in science. So if we're going to dig a little deeper into our performance area, we need to look at how we compare to the um, state and district. So this is the district data of the content of the milestones and the student populations that were tested. And as you can see here, there was um, slight growth within all subject areas, but as you can see, science was the lowest. Same with the state. 
Those are the student populations and um, data across three years. There was a slight decrease in mathematics across the state, but um, and a very slight increase in science or stable across the state in science. So we're going to dig deeper into our science content standards, but I want you to take into consideration this discussion question. As we look at Reese compared to this district, why do you think the number of students meeting or exceeding the standards in science is significantly lower than other content areas? As you saw, we were high in math, but then our concentration in science went down. So we need to take a little I dig a little deeper into our science content as we compare with state and district. So let's look a, at how we compare with the state and district in this graph. On our science milestone data now, take into consideration our fifth grade population. As you can see, um, we are continuing to outperform state and district uh, percentages, but we are decreasing uh, in our science content mastery. So you can see that there is a slight increase in our uh, state and district data, but a, a very significant decrease from our school data. So let's dig a little deeper into uh, our student populations. So as we look at this graph, we're looking at students in fifth grade and our um, through race and ethnicity over the course of three years. So we're looking at our African American population, our white and a Latino and Latina population as well. And as you can see, there were decreases with all populations, but the most significant decrease was with our Latino Latina from 2017 to 2019 with 81.3% to 65.8%. And then if we dig into our data with by gender over the course of three years, we can see that the female and male population are about the same with the female population outperforming the male population by slight percentages. So let's take a look at our subgroups. Our students with disabilities, as you can see there's 0% on the graph because in 2017 we did not have or count for students with disabilities in fifth grade. And there was another decrease with our student percentages at or above proficiency in science from 2018 to 2019 with 56 to 44 percent. This is the one that we will need to focus on because as you can see in 2017, there was a 69 percent proficiency at or above in science with our ELL learners, but then in 2019 it went down to 31 percent. And this is across three years and as you can see zero percent was for 2018 where uh, we did not have um, ELL students in our fifth grade population then. So let's look at our, our strengths and our weaknesses. Our strengths are identified as compared to state and district data, we have consistently come on top with 7% or higher in proficiency percentages with the state and district. We also show a similar trend in data among male and female proficiency percentages. And we have also seen an increase in proficiency levels in our mathematics percentages over the course of three years. This is going to be important as we tie in our science standards and our prioritized standards. Our weaknesses. While we are outperforming district and state percentages, we dropped a significant amount from 2017 to 2019 in our science content proficiency levels by 12.8%. Our Latino and Latina student proficiency levels in science saw the most percentage decrease of about 15.5% from 2017 to 2019. And in which our white students dropped 
by 11.3% and our African American students dropped by 6.9%. There was a significant drop from our ELL student proficiency levels in science of about 38% from 2017 to 2019, and our students with disabilities student proficiency levels from about 12% from 2018 to 2019. So, what does this mean? These are questions to consider as we look into our data. How can River Eves Elementary continue to extend equity to all student demographics? As you can see, one of the demographics that we need to focus on is our Latino and Latina population with that um, significant decrease. How can teachers utilize benchmark data to address student gaps and learning problems? How can we address the needs at the moment utilizing our, our science uh, prioritize standards from our standards mastery framework and catch the needs before the test is given. And what are ways that we can integrate science into our curriculum in order to meet personalized learning needs and address prioritized standards? So this is taking into consideration our STEM goals. How can we align our STEM goals into uh, the rest of our curriculum in order to meet those science prioritized standards? And how can Reese continue to be culturally responsive when it comes to instruction and assessment? How can we meet those needs as we continue to look forward? So here are some action items that we need to consider as we continue this data talk. So review the data over, overview with all science teachers from K to five. I think it's vital that we're all on the same page as we continue to plan because all science standards, prioritized standards, lead towards an end goal. We need to develop a shared vision for STEM and science prioritized standard integration into all content areas. And I believe developing a pineapple chart system in which teachers can observe science or STEM instruction in action. I think this is vital as we have a population that is uh, has done STEM instruction for quite some time and it, it is vital for our new teacher population to be able to see it in action or even um, vice versa. New ideas can help us create better instruction. Work alongside district STEM and administrators to develop units where science prioritized standards are integrated. And as we continue that work, we will see um, an increase in science proficiency, proficiency over time. And then the last one is offer time and space for instructional collaboration among science and all content teachers. That is vital as we continue our our work towards student achievement in science. Thank you so much, and I hope to continue this work as we uh, continue to look forward.